Rabbi Arthur Schneier, beloved friend, your excellencies, ambassadors, and representatives of the world's nations, distinguished leaders of the Jewish community and other faith communities, beloved children, shalom. It is indeed a real joy for us to be afforded the opportunity to visit this blessed Park East Synagogue in the heart of this extraordinary city. We are familiar with your spiritual leaders. We are acquainted with your religious and social programs, and we admire your diverse educational initiatives for the, for the formation of your faithful. More particularly, however, we are aware of the extraordinary work for religious freedom by Rabbi Schneier through the Appeal of Conscience Foundation, for which our dear friend has deservedly received the Patriarch Athenagoras Human Rights Award of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in America from the hands of our beloved Exarch, Archbishop Demetrius. Yet our visit here is more than simply a formality. It transcends a mere courteous visit of a Christian leader to a Jewish leader. Even as the successor of St. Peter, our brother, His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI, visited here last year, we also come the successor of Peter's earthly brother, the first called Apostle St. Andrew, inspired by our fervent conviction that the most urgent task that lies before all faith communities is our global cooperation for the promotion of greater, greater tolerance and understanding among the peoples, races, and religions of our planet. This is why accompanying us today is His Eminence Metropolitan Emmanuel of France, who facilitates and chairs the international academic consultations between Orthodox Christianity and Judaism, initiated by the Ecumenical Patriarchate since the mid-1970s. We are pleased that the seventh academic consultation between Judaism and Orthodoxy will convene two weeks, two weeks hence in Athens, Greece. The title of the consultation, The World in Crisis, Ethical Challenges and Religious Perspectives, is indeed timely, given the ecological, social, financial, and political upheavals in our world today. We personally had attended a previous academic conference in Thessaloniki between Christian Orthodox and Jews. And we visited then the monument of the Holocaust in the city. There is no doubt in our mind that interfaith dialogue is a responsibility and obligation for all religious leaders of our time. For not only do we have common ground that unites us, such as the sacred scriptures that we cherish, as well as the patriarchs and prophets that we venerate, but we also have common issues that we face in our world. Foremost among these crucial issues is the preservation of God's creation, the natural environment that we are commanded to till and keep, Genesis 2.15, as priestly stewards of the earth. As you are aware, we have just completed our eighth ecological symposium on the Mississippi River in New Orleans, where we raised awareness to the vast ethical and social problems intimately related to the devastation of the world's natural resources as a result of human arrogance and greed. From the outset 
of our environmental initiatives. We recognize the importance of working together with other disciplines, such as scientists and policymakers, as well as other confessions and religions. For the environment surely transcends doctrinal boundaries. It is something for which we are collectively responsible. It is something that we can only address together and not in isolation. And faith communities in the United States have an increased responsibility and obligation to educate their faithful about the grave impact of first world nations on the planet's capacity for survival. Other issues of common concern for the world's faith communities include the rising fundamentalism and fanaticism in religious circles, as well as the escalating racism and terrorism in the world. That is why we joined with Rabbi Schneier and we continue to work with the Appeal of Conscience Foundation to encourage greater understanding and tolerance among religions, and when necessary, to speak the truth in love and to declare, as was first declared in Bern, Switzerland, and reaffirmed in Istanbul, a crime committed in the name of religion is a crime against religion. We owe it as Jews and Christians to our common heritage, to imitate our forefather Abraham, who received the unexpected visit of the three strangers under the shade of the oak trees in Mamre, described in Genesis 18. Israel's patriarch did not consider these strangers a threat or danger to his ways or to his possessions. He was not accursed by xenophobia, the fear of the stranger, but rather he was consumed by philoxenia, the love of the stranger, philoxenia, a beautiful Greek word. Instead, he spontaneously shared with them his friendship and his food, extending such generous hospitality that the just treatment and compassionate care of strangers is enshrined in the Torah and in the Orthodox Christian tradition. This sin uh, has been interpreted and identified with the life of God. Dear friends, we are called to become prophetic communities of transformation in a world of stagnation, prophetic communities of peace in a global society threatened by war, prophetic communities of dialogue in a culture characterized by conflict, and prophetic communities of reconciliation with God's creation at a time when the Earth's future is at risk. We all have great exemplars to follow. For us Christians, we shall never forget the heroes of Bulgaria and Greece who, during the Second World War, risked their own lives to save their Jewish friends and neighbors from the outrageous horror of the Holocaust. Tomorrow, we are going to visit our dearly beloved friend, Muhtar Kent, in Atlanta, the number number one of Coca-Cola worldwide. He is a very good friend of ours. His father used to be a Turkish diplomat who worked very strongly in a compassionate way to protect Jews, Turkish citizens, and not only. A few years ago, the Jewish community in Istanbul organized a very moving celebration to venerate the Father Kent's service, generosity to the Jewish community.
community during the Second World War. And for you, children of Abraham, we have those heroes who, against all odds, established a new nation to safeguard the tradition of the people of Israel. Neither of these efforts was perfect. Only a handful were saved. And today, we behold how difficult it is to establish security and justice for all in the Middle East. Nevertheless, we are not dismayed. We are emboldened to continue our common struggle. A few years ago, we paid an official visit to the Patriarchate of Jerusalem. And the then president of Israel, Weissman, received us in his office. And he said, Your All Holiness, you know, I am an officer. And as such, during my whole life, I made either war or peace. I worked for either war or peace. And from my own experience, I can assure you that make peace is much more difficult than make war. Let us face these tasks together. Let us hold our hands not only in prayer, but also in solidarity with one another. We owe it to our God, to our common patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to each other and to the world. Thank you. 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 Thank you.